Welcome to the Shack Out Back. We're back again. Um, Evan, he's got some car issues, and so he is uh, working on two, not one, but two vehicles that he has to get up and running. And so uh, he's in our prayers. We'd help him if we could. Uh, but I got surgery fr uh, Friday, and so I'm limping around. You, I got my stretchy pants on. You can't tell. But I'm comfortable back here, sort of. And so keep me in your prayers. It's uh, recovering from surgery. It, and it's just painful. But anyways, other than that, we're here today. And we wanted, um, based on kind of what we kind of referred to last week, when my dad made that joke about um, how he says, oh, I'm not, I'm not saying to follow in the shadows because the way he put like Jesus his shadow, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And he kind of led us into, he was, he was making a joke at how some people, when they hear people, they pick the worst possible things that person says and they like want to perseverate on how they said it, but they totally missed the big picture of what they were saying. You know what I'm saying? So, so we're going to go back into that. Um, and kind of lead off here and because that's a uh, it's a super major problem in the church today and it's in it's a super major problem in the world today people perceive information very differently you know what i'm saying and especially now i mean you got you got propaganda as far as the eye can see and who knows really what is the truth and who knows really what is actually going on but you're you're fed a bunch of stories that try to fit themselves together, but there's something that happens over time. These 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 nasty little facts pop up over time, that kind of show you that what they've been saying is not probably the truth. You see what I'm saying? And so now, when I hear, you know, whatever's being said, you know, you've got that critical way of thinking about it. You see what I'm saying? You're like you don't necessarily trust everything that you hear over time because you've 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 seen enough to know that 90% of the time they're just lying to you. And so when you're kind of going into it and you're being a little bit more careful how you hear that information, you see what I'm saying? You're being a little bit more studious about how you're receiving it. And um, that's kind of what we wanted to talk about. Some people take good things and they twist them. And some people, they, they take those bad things and they perceive them as good, and then some people are as as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove, and they're kind of together. They're taking everything they're allowing into their their mind, and they're I don't know. They're scanning it. They're it's going through a process to where you know they're being hard on it just to make sure they're not believing something that's a lie, or and they're understanding it the right way. And so that's what we wanted to talk about. What kind of hearer are you? Um, but first, let's just read. Let's just jump right into it and see what Jesus says, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. It's Mark chapter 4, verse 24. Um, DJ, I don't know if do you want to read that one. Sure, yeah. So Mark 4, 24. If you have your Bibles, I'd open up to Mark 4, because we're going to pretty much be in there, that chapter, this whole time. And it, it'd probably be helpful if you guys were following along and seeing what we're seeing um, and just trying to explain it to you just to make, so it makes a little bit better sense. But Mark chapter 4, verse 24 is where we're going to start it off. And DJ's got the floor. Uh, and he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear with what ye measure. Ye meet, it shall be measured to you and unto you, that here shall more be given. Right, that's the old English. So it's like take basically what it's saying is be very careful on how you hear. Because how you hear, that measurement you make inside your mind, uh, it shall be measured unto you. And so it's all depending on how you're perceiving something. It's, it's going to actually affect your physical life. And that's what he's, it's a very deep spiritual thought if you think about what he's saying. It's not, that's not like something you could tell a little child and him fully understand right away. You see what I'm saying? He's. I think it comes with, uh, everybody has a different way of uh, absorbing something because they're taking their life experiences. Yes. And trying to, to make an understanding of it. Yes. And you're right. I would say that you probably penned it down. Their life, their life experiences. And so some people's life experiences have not been super good, dude. Yeah. And so naturally, they're going to hear something, and maybe they're going to, because of that life not being super good, they're going to have more of a tendency to 
to hear something in a maybe a, a more twisted way. Um, not how it was intended, but they put their little their baggage on it, and then now you have something that maybe it wasn't actually even said. You know, you took that out of context, and you hear that a lot. When uh, I don't know if you're married, that happens all the time. You know, like she says something and you think she has some connotation behind it or assumption. And so you take it wrong and vice versa. You know, she does the same thing. My wife's here. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we both do it. Everybody's guilty of it. I'm not I'm not saying the girls are worse than guys are. We, we all have our our, you know, our misunderstandings. And it's usually because of how we hear it, though. Yes. You know what I'm saying? 90% of the time. Sometimes we're pretty accurate when they're t calling you an idiot. That probably means you're, <laughs> you're an idiot. You know, that's what they're after. But a lot of the times it will cause unnecessary fights because you just take it the wrong way. And Jesus is getting into, like, the Word of God. And he's like, man, you better be very careful how you hear it because how you hear it is going to depend a whole lot on, like, your salvation yes. and how much you have spiritually. And so... The context of that whole verse is in Mark chapter 4. And I figure instead of trying to make something up for you guys, let's just go back to s explain it exactly how Jesus tried to explain it right before he actually said it. So he was building up this idea of being careful of how you hear. And he decided to use the parable of the sower. And everybody knows the parable of the sower, right? Jesus went around. He started, well, not Jesus, but the planter. He went around. He started throwing seed. Some landed in soil that was good and it took off and had no problems. Some landed in soil that was like the road. It was just packed down. It was too hard. So it, it went under, but there was too many rocks. It could never really take a root. Sun came up. It killed it. Some he threw on the side of the road where a bunch of weeds were growing. And then the weeds grew up and choked the fruit. And then, you know what I'm saying? There's all kinds of examples that he gives. And so right after that story that he tells you, um uh, we'll take it up in verse what verse 11 through 12 well before we go there i i found a verse that, that said and the disciples came and said unto him why speakest uh thou unto them in parables right and that's where 11 and 12 come into play yes and so the apostles are asking them okay why are you telling stories about a dude throwing seed into the soil and then going through all the possible scenarios of whether or not that fruit will grow or not. Yeah. And so Jesus explains it, like you were saying, in verse 11 to 12. Now, he's talking to his disciples here, though. So, like, he was on the boat. He was preaching to a, a medium-sized crowd based on the scriptures. And after he got done speaking many parables, and this was just so happened to be one, the disciples kind of talked to him afterwards and were like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> that was nice story time, but, like, what, what are we doing, you know? Yeah. And so Jesus goes to explain it. In verse 19, he says, this is chapter 4 of Mark. He says, And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm all over I'm looking place. at you. Saying, no, verse, where's that at? <laughs> <laughs> chapter 4, verse 11. That was my bad. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but under the, unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, in these story-like things. Verse 12, That seeing they may see and not perceive it, and hearing they may hear but not really understand it, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven of them. And so what Jesus basically, I think what he just basically explained to the apostles was, listen, I, this is a planting the seed situation. Their harvest is not really ready. This is the first time that maybe in their lives that somebody has taught them to narrow their perspective on what true spirituality is. And they don't fully comprehend everything that I am saying. But guess what I just did? I just planted the seed just like I told them the story of the man that was planting the seed. And so what we will see come from their come from their soil is that's up to God. He says, it's not, I am not here to like harvest them right now. I planted the seed. And it is up to the Lord to see what he's gonna do of it. And he says, hopefully, and it lest at in their time they should be converted. 
You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. he's not he's not just shutting them off and saying, you know, I'm giving up on you. You get one lesson and you're out for the wolves. No, he's just in a very I'm planting the seed situation. I'm not I'm not looking for everybody to come forward and to fully comprehend everything that I'm saying. I'm literally just trying to get the narrative started on what true spirituality actually is. And if you look at Jesus's mission, he was constantly dealing with this 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 other theology and a lot of what people were perceiving as spirituality was the Jewish religion, right? The law, the Pharisees and what they did, the, the rings, the robes, all that stuff, the religion. And that's what a lot of people look at the church today and they look at, right? They look at mm -hmm. the, the outward appearances of what they think religion is. But what Jesus came to do is he, he went to show the people like what real, real spirituality is. And it's it has everything to do with you and and what you understand and what what you perceive as god and as spirit and and it depends on what you do with that it doesn't depend on if you wear in rings or a lot of people follow you or this or that is he's simplifying it for a crowd that's probably the first time they've heard it that way you know what i'm saying and so verse 13 he gets into his disciples he's just like so i'm going to tell you what this parable means because they fully don't comprehend it yet and because he's following them he's going to give it to them and so in verse 16 he starts explaining uh well 15 he says well 14 we'll just go in there 14 the sower soweth the word he's explaining this to the disciples 15 he says these are they by the wayside where the word is sown but when they had heard satan came immediately and taken away the word that was sown in their hearts so did you catch that when they heard it satan came in and he took it away immediately because they didn't take heed how they heard it you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. they were opened the door to satan twisting the words into maybe a perspective that wasn't the actual right one and then in verse 17 Verse 16, he says, And these are they that likewise which were sown on the stony ground, who when they had heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. But they had no roots in themselves, and so endured but for a time. Afterward, when afflicted or persecuted arise for the word's sake, immediately they were offended. All right, how are you offended? We just talked about it with man and woman, yeah. right? husband yeah. and wife it's they're easily offended but how how do you get offended right you hear something in a way not in the right way yeah especially from the god of creation you know what i'm saying like the, in mark uh 323 he says uh and he called unto them uh unto him and said unto them in parables how can satan cast out satan whenever he, he does it in parables satan can't take it out because satan would be taking himself out there she oh, is. i'm she, sorry which one was that 323 and i called him unto him sending them parables how can satan cast out so so when when he does it that way He's trying to make it to where you can't have any misunderstandings for Satan to take it out. Because how can he take out his own? Right. Well, I think the, the, the context here was they were actually accusing Jesus of being Satan. Yeah. Of Beelzebub. Because he was because, speaking in parables. Well, because he, he was, was to turn healing the, the people. Yeah. Yeah. And he was turning the parables trying to turn them around right and they he, they they perceive see they perceive like you're saying the parables as something satan would do yeah and oh you're talking in riddles just to yeah and then he me. was healing people and all this stuff and jesus just basically responds he says how can satan cast out satan that doesn't make any sense so he was just saying you're silly yeah you know but then it goes back to how they heard so when they heard what was their intention with satan or jesus constantly oh yeah. how do we catch him we don't like this guy how do we trip him up with what he says and what does cnn do on every guest oh yeah they don't let the guest actually tell them why they got him on there they're they're trying to trick them up to getting the people to hear it from their slanted perspective which is usually a oh lie. yeah they don't let them finish anything they they yeah and then say. cnn's not yeah. the only one dude i've seen fox dude i've seen them all do it they're all liars 
And they all, they twist that hearing process. You see what I'm saying? Nobody's really after the truth. It's funny when you start like noticing it. Nobody cares about the truth except these people that are making other channels that are actually just wondering the same thing. Like, dude, does anybody care about actually talking about the facts of what we see happening here? Yeah. And like, just can we just open a dialogue about that? See, what you have here is you have a brood of vipers that they're not interested in what Jesus is saying. They're just looking at what he says to try to catch him. You know, just like mm -hmm. yes, last week when my dad was like, don't walk in the shadows. I'm sure they would have pulled that apart somehow and said, oh, he said to walk in the shadows, you know. But if you heard the whole thing, he was saying the shadow of Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So like there's there's a way you hear things and then there's a way that's right and then there's a way that's wrong. And that's all Jesus is trying to get people to understand here. And so he went through the second example. People got offended a bit eventually, so they didn't hear right, you know, because somebody that heard right, what it says, love is not easily offended. Mm. And so they missed something with the way, what they heard. And then in 18, it says, And these were they which were sown among thorns, such as that hear the word. In verse 19, it says, But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of these other things in interfering, and they choked the word. And so there again, he's going to what you hear. And so he's saying all these other things in your life became louder. You heard those calls a lot clearer than you heard the call that you first accepted, which was truth. And he says, and that will eventually choke out what you heard, which is the spirit, which mm -hmm. is the seed, which is faith. And then he goes right into what we started with. Verse 24 right he says take heed how you hear because <coughs> with what measure you meet it shall be measured to you and unto you that hear shall more be given so he's saying listen if you can hear it for what it is he says you will be given more and more and more and more and the truth will just it will overflow your cup and you will have understanding like like David says, he says, I have more understanding than the people that are counseling me because I have the word of God. And David was somebody that was able to hear God for what he was actually saying. And he, he didn't become offended. He didn't, he didn't let all these other things get more important. You know what I'm saying? Which would also twist your idea of hearing. You know, it, it would hurt your ability to hear somebody if you had a, an assumption already or you know, something in the back of your head that you're like, well, I think something else is better, so I'm going to keep that on the back burner. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It messes up what you are receiving at that moment. You see what I'm saying? And so Jesus' whole thing, I think, with this idea of hearing, it goes back to that kind of soil. It goes back to that kind of who are you as a human being? Mm -hmm. Who are you as somebody who actually has faith? And how much faith do you have? What kind of faith is it? Because... Listen, you heard what everybody else heard. Why do some people hear it and they just fall down and say, Oh my goodness, Lord, thank you so much for what you've done for me. I'm, I'm not worthy of this. And then they just they, they cling to it. And that gets them through life, like the Bible says, the shepherd will, until the very end. And you see, you see those people hit hard times. You see those people hit things, and you're just like, man, they're still in love with Jesus, you know? So it's like it's their faith. It was something much deeper. They heard it the right way. Where are we when it comes to hearing? How have you heard? Um, is religion a big, like, is it a hot topic for you? Is it something that you just don't want to open dialogue up to it? Because, hey, you, you've heard it. You don't want to deal with it again. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't want to be tested it's because you think you know what you've heard but how did you hear that um there's many things to hear and that's it always takes me back to uh that last part of that verse he says um and unto you that hear shall be more given you know if you truly heard the word of god and have accepted it the way the bible teaches you to how to accept it guys you don't you want more of it yeah you're not going to turn down a conversation about it. Even if you know somebody is going to try to spit maybe a little misunderstanding at you to try to convince you, like, hey, this is how the Bible is saying it. Maybe you know better. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can show them another verse that says, well, if that's true, what, do you, what does this verse mean? Then? Like, you see what I'm saying? That 
it's all about how you hear. Are you ready to defend what you've heard? Has it made sense enough to you that you can defend it? Mm-hmm. I think that's where he's after. He's like, he was wanting those fighters, those people that like truly get it and they, they, they heard it the right way. And so in verse, uh, second Corinthians 12, 15, it's kind of the contrary of that. The two different types of listeners, I think, is just really well spelled out here when Paul's talking to the church. And I'll let DJ read that one, um, but it's an interesting one. And I will very gladly send and be sent for you. Though the, the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Right. Have you ever, I guess, good question, The only, I guess, you know, you have experience it with with everything, but the the one funny kind of example is uh, when when you really liked a girl in high school or college or something, and you know you gave a lot to them and you you put a lot of like thought into them and you know it seemed like the more you kind of loved them and the more clingy you got, you know that was like yeah. a word that we used a lot as teenagers, like you clinged a little bit. It seemed like if it wasn't right, if the if if the match up wasn't the right one, yeah. it seemed like the more they you pushed them away with that kind of action. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe they weren't ready to be serious, or maybe you're being a little too thick, you too strong. And that's kind of what Paul is saying here with the word of God. He's saying it seems like the more I love you and the more I give myself for you, he says it seems like the more you hate me. And the more you want nothing to do with me. And so he's talking about the word of God. You got a group of listeners here that instead of that making them stronger and more understanding and more ready to fight the, the fight of faith and to, to help Paul with doing that, it seemed like it had the opposite effect on some in the church. And the more they hated it. I, I think it's because then, then maybe they would have to change. Yeah, I was just gonna ask, what do you think would cause something like that? Yeah, you know, well, I'm comfortable with where I'm at now. You know. Yeah. You know, why can't I receive a gift without having to to work for it? Right, and I mean, we fall into that here now these days because life has become kind of comfortable. Like people can kind of get away with being a little bit lazy, going to oh, work, yeah. coming home, doing the same thing every day. Kind of, you can go into like a, um. I don't know, like a cycle of just kind of doing what you need to do to get by. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's easy to do that. And then people, everybody else's needs and stuff, that gets pushed to the bottom because your life becomes a little bit more important because of that comfort. And so what he's, what ha- apparently happened to those people in Second Corinthians, because Paul was challenging constantly. And it seemed like the more he, he loved them by telling them what they need to know to be closer to Jesus, it means, seems like they hated him more and more and more and more and more, you know, because of the way they were hearing. And it's that oh, pride yeah. of life Jesus talks about, right? You can't tell me what to do and all this stuff. That comes into play with everybody. And so we got to watch that, I think, when we hear things. And how are you hearing things? Because are you the person that the more you hear, the more you hate him? Or are you the person, the more you hear, the more you fall in love with just what an amazing job he's done with this church that he set up and what he's actually given, this gift that he's given man. And so we wanted to kind of bring that up. It's going to be a little bit of a short one. I don't know, unless you had something else to throw in there, but I just kind of think that's super important for us to talk about. How are we hearing? You know, how did you guys hear? How did you hear the last video? How did you hear the video before that? Did you did you have a bunch of already preconceived thoughts and feelings about that topic maybe? And then so you weren't able just to open up and just to see clearly what the very first church did? You see what I'm saying? Like you, this is dangerous because you've heard something from somewhere else. Well, based on what Jesus was saying, you know that could have been that could have been thorns you know the cares of this world something that you had picked up on the side that grow too big it'll actually choke that truth out to where you don't actually accept it as simply as it is stated in scriptures anymore you know you you need something else and 
Jesus is saying, hey, listen, make sure that's not you because those people don't, they don't make it. And I, I think that's an important, if we're going to go down to 101, basic level, it's like as, as easy as a bearded mechanic can understand it, I think we probably go to how you receive it, how it goes mm -hmm. into your earlobe, and then what process happens from there. And so just kind of maybe take a thought of that, take that with you this week, test it out when your wife's talking to you or your husband's talking to you, just to think about how you're hearing it, you know? Maybe they give you good reason to hear it a certain way, but be aware that you could be hearing it the wrong way and could be causing more problems for yourself than you need to be. Um, <laughs> Never think that she's just talking. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, there's, um, so there's always a way to take stuff, guys, and we're just, we hope and we pray that maybe you guys take the word of God the way it, that it was intended for you to take it. It was intended to save you. That's what Jesus says. He said, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came to save it. He, you know, it's just like your mom and dad. They don't, they don't tell you not to t touch the stove because they're mean and they want to condemn you and they want to like diminish your intelligence. No, they're just kind of a warning because they really don't want you to be in a whole lot of pain when you go over and place your hand on that stove. You see what I'm saying? That's all that's all it's being done here. But God is saying, listen, some people will still not hear it the right way. And so with that, guys, just make sure you're hearing. You take heed how you hear. Um, because that was one of the very first lessons he gave his disciples. He says, take heed how you listen, how you hear. Um, be very aware of what's being said and how you're perceiving it and whether or not you're perceiving the right way or you're you're internalizing it or if it's just bouncing off and it's just something that you've heard, you know, and then you forget. So that was the message. Mark chapter 4 is really good scripture to start reading. So you guys go in there and start reading for yourself. Um, can't explain how important it is to read the Bible. It'll It'll... That will change your life probably quicker than anything. So that's just kind of what we thought. Is there anything else you wanted to add there, DJ? Oh, no. Uh, I, I look at it as gardening. Uh, to, to plant a good seed, you know, you got to cultivate, you know. Right. You, you got to till the earth, you know. Yeah. And if we're the soil, like the Bible says, I mean, what, what kind of minerals are we allowing into our soil? Yeah. Can't that are gonna, allow the salt. Yeah. <laughs> are we helping the process grow good things? Or are we like, we're filling up our soil with acidic yeah. things that are going to hurt the fruit? You know what I'm saying? Or, mm -hmm. or rocks that are going to st stomp out the roots of it. So it's important that you know what kind of listener you are. What kind of soil are you? So when I say what kind of soil are you, really what Jesus is saying is what kind of listener are you? You know, do you hear the right things when they're said? But anyway, from there, I guess we'll just we'll close it out. We'll see you guys, Lord willing, next week. I think we got maybe we're going to try to do a shorty uh, video this weekend. We're going to the Creation Museum. I'll be hobbling along. At, in Noah's Ark. Yeah, Noah's Ark. They made that new Noah's Ark place um, up there, so we're going to check that out. And we're excited to go see the Creation Museum in Kentucky, so... Uh, maybe, just maybe, we'll take a video of it for you, <laughs> if you're lucky. No, but uh, yeah, we'll do our best to maybe get a short one up here just so you guys can see some of it and maybe tell you something we've learned on the, the trip. But other than that, we're going to close it out. Um, DJ, do you want to say a prayer for us, sure, or is it yeah. my turn? You got yeah, it. I'll say it. All right. You, you get next one. All okay. right, you got it. Uh, dear Lord, we come to you. Uh, and in, in thankfulness uh, that we are here another day to to talk about you to to spread your good word, uh, Lord, we we ask you to uh, look after all our friends and family and extended uh, loved ones. Uh, uh, may they uh, get something from the the word that we were speaking here tonight, Lord. We just love you and and pray that you. Uh, that one day everybody will be able to to grow their seed and 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 harvest it and and be there with you, Lord. We just ask in the, in humbleness 
that uh, you will just uh, put your hand on us and uh, show us which way to grow. Uh, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys have a great night, and thanks for tuning in to the Shack Out Back. <laughs>